Mr. Trump, your presidency, I love your presidency. I call it disgrace the nation. <laughs> you have more people marching against you than cancer. You talk like a sign language gorilla who got hit in the head. In fact, the only thing your mouth is good for is being Vladimir Putin's <laughs> holster. Remember that time back in January when millions of Americans fired up Pinterest, broke out their glue sticks, and went arts and crafts wild like kids at camp? Armed with thousands of colorful banners, posters, and signs, an estimated 4.5 million people around the world took to the streets on January 21st, 2017 for the Women's March. To remind ourselves of just a few of the reasons why people were out that day, let's pause for a moment and listen to some words from our Commander-in-Chief that helped inspire this tremendous event. I did try and fuck her. She was married. <laughs> huge news, Sarah. I moved on her like a bitch, <laughs> but I couldn't get there, and she was married. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. <laughs> I can do anything. Yeah. That's our president back in 2005 when he was merely a billionaire reality TV show host, proudly admitting how he abused his power and celebrity to sexually harass and assault vulnerable women. And by the way, this may be the most famous example of Trump telling us what he considers to be the real art of the deal, but it's by no means the only one. Even before Trump announced his candidacy for president, every news cycle about him was like being stuck in a game of rape culture Jumanji. And partially in response to his blatant abuse of misogyny, upwards of 4.6 million people gathered in more than 550 cities in the United States alone, many of them wielding some seriously spectacular signs displaying messages of resistance to systematic racism, sexism, and other forms of oppression. But unfortunately, not all of the images or chants back in January were inspirational. In fact, when you get right down to it, some of the signs and slogans didn't just lack creativity, they actively reinforced precisely what the people holding them thought they were protesting. Punchy doesn't always equal progressive, y'all. When you're joking about the unusually small size of someone's hands, or laughing at pictures of him in homoerotic scenarios, you're actually feeding the same logic that encourages someone to think that they can, well, move on someone like a bitch. Our culture tells us how a real man should think, what he should look like, and who he can dominate. These messages are toxic. They depend on a version of masculinity that says, real men use power to dominate. They take what they want in business or politics or in their relationships with women. And yes, these messages equate having small hands or small anything with being less of a real man. Let's look at some more examples to help us unpack how this works. In August of 2016, our last blissful pre-election summer, a statue appeared in New York City's Union Square of a very naked Donald Trump. The size of this statue's genitals was clearly intended to be an insult to the man whose greatest leadership experience up to that point may have been the two times he fired Stephen Baldwin on The Celebrity Apprentice. You're fired. From public art and social media to protests and marches, renderings like this statue are everywhere. It's impossible to avoid the memes about hand size, poorly executed spray tans, and comb overs that are meant to offend a certain thin-skinned individual who has a tendency to rage on Twitter and also has access to the nuclear codes. In addition to the sea of miniature members, tiny hands, and aggressively orange bouffants, criticism in public spaces has included numerous images of Trump and Putin taking their diplomatic intimacy to the physical level. Valentine's Day proved to be a pretty great opportunity for artists intending to defy Trump to use some homoerotic imagery to get in some jabs. But in this case, homoerotic equates to homophobic. If you use gay imagery to insult someone, the implication is that homosexuality is itself something shameful. These images don't just criticize a political relationship, they emasculate Trump by using makeup, pregnancy, and even his position as the little spoon to suggest his effeminacy. These images also mock the notion of two men being together sexually or romantically, which communicates to all onlookers that, in 2017, intimacy between two real men is laughable. People who would consider themselves LGBT allies are deploying the kind of rhetoric that implies that anything other than stereotypical masculine or heterosexual behavior is wrong or absurd. What do we mean when we say stereotypically masculine? Well, the media we create and engage with too often depicts aggression, physical strength, pride, protectiveness, and even short tempers as manly. We've elevated those traits from manly virtues to masculine requirements, and any deviation from them makes a man suspect. 
The end result is that at times, our entire culture seems like a backslapping locker room full of chuckleheads, and we get a president who learned diplomacy from the little rascals. Now what do you say if we form a new club and call it the He-Men Woman Hairs Club? These images are so pervasive and so socially entrenched that we've come to accept them as natural and true, like the sun rising in the east or every odd-numbered Star Trek movie being total crap. But there's nothing objectively true about the way our culture dictates how to be a man. In fact, this version of masculinity is only recognizable because we contrast it with its opposite — weakness, humility, and vulnerability. In other words, femininity. If being a real man means being stoic, strong, and rational, then being a real woman wins you a lifetime supply of timidity, weakness, and hysteria. Bonus round, the word hysteria comes from the Greek word for uterus. Associations of compassion, vulnerability, and emotion with femininity are no more intrinsically true than associations of aggression and dominance with masculinity. But in setting up this contrast, and by defining behaviors, bodies, and appearances as either masculine or feminine, our culture says that men should exhibit masculine attributes, and conversely, women should exhibit recognizably feminine traits. Cross or blur that culturally defined line, and you've got a real problem on your hands. No matter how big or small. The truth is that cultural ideas about masculinity and femininity limit all of us to one degree or another, though people who identify as men and people who identify as women are impacted in very different ways. In our culture, the attributes associated with femininity are deeply shameful for real men to possess. There's nothing more insulting a man can say to another man than to question his masculinity or to call him some colorful synonym for woman. Why? Because as we continue to perpetuate this strict system of only two gender options, femininity continues to be regarded as something negative. Well, what am I then? Hmm? What are you? You are my bitch. That's what. My own personal bitch. I'm gonna make you my bitch's bitch. You're gonna be my grand bitch. Stop being such a pussy. You fucking shot me! In actuality, people of any gender can possess any personality trait and can find themselves within the binary of male and female, somewhere in between, or outside of it entirely. But as long as our culture maintains and normalizes rigid expectations related to gender, like continuing to prize masculinity while denigrating femininity, these ideas about gender will contribute to the oppression of particular groups of people, including women, trans folks, and non-binary people. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, what does all this have to do with insults hurled at Donald Trump? Let me be very clear about this. I am not defending Donald Trump. This is about recognizing that jokes about who is and isn't a real man are the kinds of things that Trump himself would laugh at. Yeah, we know that this kind of stuff drives Trump up the wall, but that's not a good excuse to participate in it. We're better than that. We're certainly funnier. We need to challenge what many of those criticisms and insults are actually saying about men, women, gender, and sexuality, because they reinforce harmful patriarchal ideas that actually benefit people like our current president. Sure, it can be gratifying to carry a sign or share a Facebook post that would get under the skin of our quick-tempered, fast-tweeting, rarely self-reflecting president, and because Trump buys so fully into deeply sexist ideas about masculinity and power himself, questioning his masculinity can seem like an easy, effective way to knock him down a peg. But we have to think about the message we're sending when we insult anyone using the idea that small hands are unmanly or that two men loving each other is embarrassing even a president who was leaving a bad taste in people's mouths with his personal line of stakes at the sharper image, long before he was offending and embarrassing us as commander-in-chief. If we rely on patriarchal ideas of masculinity to insult and protest against someone who clearly benefits from patriarchy and misogyny, and from his own position as a straight, white, tremendously wealthy man, then we help to perpetuate these same norms. These are the very norms that help enable someone to laugh off their own history of sexism and sexual assault and still get elected to the highest office in the land. What would actually be transgressive and challenging to Trump is a resistance that works to dismantle the very notions of patriarchy and power that helped propel him to the presidency. A resistance that defies rigid notions of masculinity and femininity and loudly embraces people of all genders and all gender expressions. So let's stop resorting to body shaming or homophobia when what we're really trying to do is critique the misogyny, the history of sexual assault, and the abuse of political power by someone who should have done us a huge favor and disappeared from the public sphere following his cameo in Home Alone 2. Excuse me, where's the lobby? Down the hall and to the left. Thanks. 
This is our brand new Feminist Frequency Show. If you like what we're doing here, please share it with your friends, subscribe for more videos, and donate to help us continue making them.